Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. Just before the COP28 um, in Dubai in uh, December 2023, there was a flurry of reports by various groups um, to release their material um, in time for the COP so they could be discussed at the COP. So this is one of them. It's by Greenpeace Netherlands. And it's a very interesting way of looking at fossil fuel emissions. Today's emissions, tomorrow's death. So it's looking at how Europe's major oil and gas companies are putting lives at risk. And it's using a, a metric, a new metric called the mortality cost of carbon or MCC. So it's a great metric. And I think, you know, when people report emissions, we should actually calculate the number of people that will die in the future because of those emissions and have this mortality cost of carbon. This analysis is just for deaths from heat related um, uh, effects from climate change, you know, but eventually I think you should add all of the other things, whether it be floods, torrential rains, um, droughts leading to, leading to deaths, you know, and, and you can also do it not just for humans, but also for animals in the biosphere, et cetera. Anyway, you know, people will get it, I think. You know, people trying to get their heads around, well, a ton of carbon, what is that doing? But people saying, okay, well, so many people are gonna be dying in the future per ton of carbon and put those numbers in all the reports and everything by mandate, then it could be a very effective thing. So let's have a look at this this report. Um, okay, so basically, you know, we know what fossil fuels are doing. We know the heating that's being caused. We know the extreme weather events that are increasing and all of these things are endangering human lives. The World Health Organization, WHO, has identified the climate crisis as the greatest human health challenge and a risk that seriously threatens all aspects of society. Um, change the H to an M, the WMO, the World Meteorological Organization, WMO, says extreme weather has already caused the deaths of 2 million people and 4.3 trillion in economic damage over the past uh, half a century, with people in the global south suffering most. According to their latest assessment report, AR6, about three, between 3.3 and 3.6 billion people, just less than half of the people living on the planet live in regions that are highly vulnerable to climate change. Okay, so deaths and public health impacts resulting from the actions of the fossil fuel industry are not limited to those driven by global heating, but global heating is what's gonna be discussed. Um, there's also fossil fuel related air pollution that kills millions of people annually um, and so on. But heat waves are among the deadliest extreme weather events for humans, thousands of people dying each year, according to the WMO, right? So there's, you know, as temperatures rise, there's gonna be many, many temperature related excess deaths. Now, I think the numbers they come up with are much lower than <laughs> than we can expect. But I mean, the whole idea of this report is, I think the key thing is the, the way it's being done, the way you're looking at mortality, cost of carbon, MCC. This should become a very common metric. So when any company has to report their emissions, they also have to report the MCC or how many people they'll, they'll be killing in, in the future based on what they're producing today. Okay, so, um, you know, there's, there, there's a thousand ton rule seems to be coming out of it. This order of magnitude estimate suggests that one person will die prematurely in the future every time a thousand tons of carbon are burned, but they actually went and looked at more detailed assessments. Now, John Knoll, who wrote this uh, paper, the mortality, actually, it's not, he didn't write it, but uh, somebody else did. Okay, so John Knoll, a, um, a, he's a philosopher. 
So re referring to death, illness, and injury, philosopher John Nolt explained, climate change will cause large numbers of casualties, perhaps extending over thousands of years. Casualties have a clear moral significance that economic and other technical measures of harm tend to mask. They are moreover universally understood, whereas other measures of harm are not. Such estimates would have wide margins of error, but they would add substantially to humanity's grasp of the moral cost of particular greenhouse gas emissions. Great quote. Okay, so what this study does is it looks at nine oil and gas companies headquartered in Europe, and it does mortality estimates based on their self-reported greenhouse gas emissions in 2022, and applying the mortality cost of carbon method developed by Bressler, um, which is that paper, um, which is this paper, which is open source. Okay, so um, it's a conservative estimate because it's just looking at the heat, but let's have a look at the results. So they calculated, they use an integrated assessment model. They calculated the excess deaths that would result and uh, uncertainties and so on. And here is the data. Uh, they looked at uh, emissions are like three different types, scope one, two, and three. Scope one is direct uh, emissions. Scope two is indirect emissions from the company, from the generation of purchased energy to perform what the company is doing. And scope three is all indirect emissions not included in scope two that are in the value chain of the reporting company, including both upstream and downstream emissions. Okay, so they looked at those sort of things and they got the numbers of megatons of CO2 in scope one, two, and three. So total combined emissions from these nine different companies. And then they did the calculations on mortality and these are the cumulative temperature related excess deaths. Um, the MCC uh, projected from such emissions. So Shell was leading, Shell won 130,000 deaths, total energy is 57,000, BP 45,000, and so on. For the other companies, a total of 360,000 deaths in the future from their uh, what they're emitting in 2022. Okay, so here's a plot just showing the, these are uh, the emissions from the different companies and the in, in blue on this scale and the cumulative deaths in red uh, from these, that these companies are causing. So, you know, report all this. Right, so the mortality cost of carbon, I think is a very useful method that can be looked at analyzing um, what uh, companies are producing. Okay, so that's the gist of this report from Greenpeace Netherlands. It was reported, that was generated for the COP28. And uh, just to look at the paper briefly, um, you can, it, it's got the methods. I'm not gonna talk about the paper actually. You can calculate you know, a, a range of mortalities from each uh, ton of uh, emissions, mortality cost of carbon, and you can uh, then apply it to different countries and see what different countries are doing from their production emissions trajectories, global average temperatures, and, uh, you know, look at the um, social cost of carbon in terms of number of people that are going to die in the future from your emissions. Again, the absolute numbers I'm not going to look at. Um, just the concept um, is very important and it's only applied to heat waves at the moment. You need to apply it to all other aspects, all other uh, factors. Um, and you can come up, I think, with very, very large numbers and, and uh, you could actually get a projection based on the numbers of, you know, when 8 billion people are are, uh, are next because that will be the planet gone basically. <laughs> so there you go. Very, very interesting report. Um, please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net and donating to my PayPal account to support my research and videos. Thanks again and bye for now.